Okay, as you approach the speed of light, time is not the only thing that changes. You get time dilation and different observers have live, literally live in different time fields or time zones. Um, but not only does time dilate, but the length of the moving object will actually contract. So, if we were to have it like a little spaceship, put some fins on it, boom, boom, and it's moving really fast this way, what will happen is it will tend to appear short. Well, it will be shorter to an outside observer. So, if I'm standing, if I'm sitting in the spaceship, the length of my spaceship just seems normal. It hasn't changed at all. But if I'm standing here, then suddenly the length of that spaceship will appear shorter. And that doesn't matter whether it's going towards me or away from me. So the length of the object also changes. So when we're doing the equation, we're going to talk about proper length. And this is just the same as in proper time. Length. And we're going to use L0. And the proper length is how long would that spaceship be to the observer, or if it was parked. So the proper, so when this, the O basically refers to the moving thing. So how long, so L O is how long is the spaceship, that's the object, um, the object to the person on it. So if this were if this spaceship were parked, it might be 50 meters long. If it was moving to this person, it would be still 50 meters long. And that would be LO. But this person here will see it as a different thing. So how can we work out how long the spaceship is? And remember we've got change in time is equal to d over v. And we re and remember the change in time itself is being modified due to the relativistic effect. So that's equal to the length of the object divided by whatever the velocity is. Which seems a bit hard, but if if we were to actually apply this in reality, basically L is e equal to, uh, yeah, well actually what's L going to equal? L is going to equal the original length or the length of the object that's moving over gamma. There's a bit of a derivation on the notes if you want. So basically with time dilation you multiply it, uh, the gamma with the, the length you divide it by gamma. And one of the usual tricks when you're doing relativistic stuff is just work out gamma separately and whenever you see it, you can just stick those values on. So let's do exercise 7.2. So a, a 100 meter spaceship um, so that's 100 meter when at rest Uh, it fly, it's fly, is flying past an observer, past an observer at a speed of 0.99c. So whenever we're dealing with this type of stuff we tend to keep the speed in terms of c because it makes the maths a lot easier. How long long does the spacecraft appear? Spacecraft appear. Well, okay, so we have to work out a couple of things. So we're going to use our equation. L is equal to L naught over... So L naught <coughs> is how long is the object when it's at rest relative to the observer at rest. So L O in this case when this thing's parked, it's 100 metres long. When it's moving to the person in the cockpit, it's 100 metres long. So we've got to work out gamma 
gamma is equal to 1 over the root of 1 minus v squared c squared, which is equal to 1 over the root of 1 minus 0 0.99 c squared over 1 squared. And we can stick that into a calculator over here. Turn on. So we go 1 minus 0.99 squared divided by 1 equals that. Take the square root of that. Bump. Ah. Let's try it again. 1 minus 0.99 squared equals. Take the square root of that. It's point. 14106. We take the inverse of that. So it's going to equal what that 7.0888. So now we can stick this in here. So the the rest mass or the, the rest length or the length of the moving object is 100 meters. Gamma is 7.0888. So we go 100 divided by gamma equals 14.11 meters. So this person here sees the spacecraft as 14.11 meters long. This person on the board sees it as 100 meters. Welcome to Special Relativity.